Got my pitch gauge, got my shingle gauge. I have chalk. My risk shot from the front of the house. That tells the insurance company that I'm at the right place and my address verification. If I'm standing here, my arms are out this way. I know that that's a pretty good angle. Now we'll go talk to the insured. Hi, Mrs. Sin, I'm Guy Grand. Hi, nice I'm gonna to be meet your you. adjuster today, how are you? Good, good. Huh? I start at the top of the roof and I work my way down. And when I'm done with that, I'll come back and talk to you, probably 15, 20 minutes. Okay. And then I'll come in and I'll take a look at the interior stuff. Okay, too. so you'll do everything outside first. Okay. And in the meantime, you can go get that list. Oh, okay. Because I'll tell you what, I wanna, me I wanna see if I catch everything that's on your list and then some. Oh, good. Well, my husband's really thorough, so hopefully you are too. Good. Perfect. Okay, thanks. Give me about 20 minutes, okay? All right. Thank I'll you. Inside. Uh huh. So I'm taking my pitch gauge. And I can see that this is a 412 pitch. And then I'm taking my shingle gauge to see. Shingle gauge slides under. I can lift this up. Oh, I can see that this is a two layer roof taking a picture of my drip edge and the second layer or the felt, whichever that might be. And what kind of roof do I got here? I can tell that this is a 30 year laminate. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go to the highest ridge of the roof. As I'm walking, I'm kind of looking around to say, yeah, I can see damage. I see wind damage over here. I see some hail damage. But the next shots I'm taking are my overview shots. So I have the right slope. And on this roof, I can literally stand right here, get my left and front and back slopes. So my overview shots. The next thing I'm gonna do is find damage. Marking out a 10 foot by 10 foot square on each slope. So this is my right slope. So I'm gonna identify up in a corner so my file reviewer can see RT equals so now I'm going to look in this test square right here, this 100 foot test square, and my goal is to find six to eight hail hits. So I can see right now, this is a hail hit right here. I can feel the softness of the shingle. I'm going to circle it. Here's one right here, another shingle. Got one right here. This is an easy roof to find six hail hits. There's lots of hail on this roof. So here's another, I can, I put my finger right here in this hail hit and I can see that this is really soft. I wanna make sure that I know that the actual matting underneath the shingle has been damaged. I'm gonna lift this one shingle up and if I feel right underneath where this hail hit is, I can feel the damage to the matting. I'm going to get my camera, because I want to prove to my file reviewers that in fact this is hail and there's damage. I... Perfect. So now I've shown the file reviewers that I found hail, that the matting is in fact damaged. We got four, five, six. This is a wind damage shingle. I'm just gonna write a W next to that. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus wind is eight. So now I'm gonna mark on this slope that I found eight plus hail hits on this 
10 foot by 10 foot square. If I come over here, I also, I can see right here, here's some more wind damage. You can see where shingles are missing here. You can see where shingles are missing here. I'm gonna go do the, the next slope. Before I measure or I do anything, it's marked my damage so I can see exactly what it is I'm gonna be doing on this roof. Now I know that my stride is 36 inches. For the camera, I'm gonna go ahead and measure this. 10 foot 6 inches, but I know that I'm pretty good on my square. So this is my left slope. Hail hit here. Now I never find two hail hits on one shingle. So if a shingle is 36 inches long and I got four hail hits, that's considered one hail hit on one shingle. Here's an interesting thing with hail. If hail comes down and lands in between two shingles, what you see is a little half moon on both sides. On a roof like this where I know there's a lot of hail, that I'm just considering that to be one hail hit. Two, three, four, five. Here's another thing to kind of look at. Even though this is an old roof, you can see right here where this is, that's probably a footfall and not a hail hit which is where, if my, as I'm walking up and down on the edge, I'm causing damage. So I try to avoid hail hits right on the edge of the shingle. Plus. Now I'll go down and do the front and back slopes. This is my front slope. It's always good to have extra chalk because you can use a whole piece of chalk on one, one roof. If you're gonna use two pieces of chalk, either have them be the same color or mark your squares out with the same color so your file reviewer knows that you're using exactly the, you're on the same roof because if he sees white on the back, he's gonna be like, where'd that come from? So since I'm almost out of chalk, I'm going to mark my square here. So, because I'm almost out of chalk, my back equals oops now I'm using a new piece of chalk you can see where this hail hit you can see the fibers in the the matting this hail hits probably I don't know years old but this is basically what happens when hail hits a roof causes damage and the UV rays start coming up you can start seeing the felt felt start splitting Now I know I'm buying this roof. So now that I've ascertained that I'm buying the roof, I need to measure the roof and figure out how many squares are on it, do my drawings, figure it out from there. So this is, this is what they call a Dutch hip. The thing you wanna remember on Dutch hips is this measurement right here. And this is three foot three inches. So when we're in Xactimate, it's gonna literally ask for this dimension right here. One thing you can do on hip roofs, especially if they're a little bit steep, is you can measure from the gutters. 
So if you look out here, you can see this gutter comes right to the edge of the, what, two inches off the eave of that. If I run my measuring tape right up against that gutter, it's going to be 28 feet, nine inches. And if you're standing off on a two-story roof, sometimes it's a little bit hard to measure this whole elevation across, or this whole eave across here. There's a couple ways you can do that. You can do that from the ground by measuring the actual foot of the house, the foundation of the house, and then adding the overhangs. Or in this case, it's not too difficult. So I'm gonna mark this at 25 feet. And again, I can run back down into the gutters. So that's 25, 35, 43 feet. Okay, now I'm gonna measure this lower part here. Twenty-nine six. And my overhang is two feet. Thirty-one six. And my up and over, which is basically measuring the rakes. Seventeen one. What you're gonna find is if the front's gonna be 17 or 18 or whatever it is, the back's gonna be the same. So you might measure the front and it'll say 17 two and the back will say 17 one. Round it off, 17 three, 17 two. Got this little hangout down here. That's going to be 10 feet by one foot six. On the back, I have a flat roof, which is a different material. So if I'm going to be replacing this, see if I can find any hail on this. Okay. So I'm calling this rolled roofing, and the reason is, if you come and take a look right here, I can actually rip rolled roofing, and I can see that fiberglass in the matting. Bitumen roofing, you can't rip. It's a rubberized roofing. So even though it looks exactly like this, you wouldn't be able to actually rip a little piece of that off or lift it up to see it. The other thing to remember too, rolled roofing is 36 inches wide and bitumen is 39 inches wide. Now the other thing I'm going to measure is this space right here from the edge of the main roof up. So I have two foot six inches approximately, two foot four inches approximately. When I put this roof into my sketch, I'm literally gonna be taking two foot six inches of this 30 year shingle times 11 feet out of the total squares of the 30 year shingle. So I have an exact measurement. Two foot six. Okay, so if you look at this, the only thing I haven't measured yet is that front off the garage because I haven't been on that yet. But I've measured, I've taken all my damage reports, I took my overviews. Now I'm going to go back and actually write what components are on the roof, take photographs of my squares so I can show my file reviewer exactly what the problem, the damages are. So when I'm taking pictures of my squares, I'm going to try to take my overview shot as much as possible so I can see this whole square in here and I can see where it says right equals eight. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to take one or two shots of good hail so I can show my file reviewer 
that on this right slope, I have identified what hail looks like. And I'm also going to take these pictures of this wind so I can show them that, yeah, we do have creasing, we have missing shingles. And that's my right slope. This is my left slope. Overview. Couple quick shots. Hail damage. And you notice earlier when I was looking at hail damage on this right slope, I lifted that shingle up and I took a photograph. That photograph's going to be out of order and I'm going to have to put it in order so I can show the hail damage lifting the shingle, showing the matting damage underneath that. Different companies will require different number of hail hits per square. So there might be a company that says, if you have eight hits in a square, well, I want to see five hail hits in that square before you go to the next slope. Usually a couple is enough to show your file reviewer that you know what you're doing. And back slope. And this on my rolled roof right here, let me get an overview and a good close-up. Even though this isn't eight hits per square, as small as this area is, I'm going to go ahead and replace it. The roofer's going to replace it. Um, it has hail damage to it. And for the cost of what it's actually going to cost to replace this over the whole estimate is going to be more than sufficient. Now I'm going to count all of my collateral. So I can see I have one, two, three, three pipe jacks. And this is right where I have this. I know that there's drip edge. I have three pipe jacks. Yes, I have drip edge. This is a two layer roof. Age is probably 20 plus, as old as this roof is. Condition is poor. My slope is a 412. My eave overhangs and rake overhangs are two feet. I have sufficient hail damage to replace. Through roof fence, these are called through roof fence. And I've got one, two, three, four. And then I have one HVC cap right up here on the corner. That's the first place to go because you can see if there's collateral damage. See, because I know there's already hail on this roof, If I take my chalk and I run my chalk over, and you can see there's a hail hit right there, there's a hail hit right there, hail hit right there. And taking a picture of collateral damage is always really good. It shows and proves that there's actually hail damage on this roof to the soft metal. So from there, now you're looking at the the rest of the shingles and all the rest of that. So let's go do the elevations. Yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna go over and get that one piece I forgot. You can see down here from the last windstorm, that area up on top where we saw shingles that were missing, typically you're gonna find them in the, on the ground somewhere in the bushes. So because I know that my front slope is gonna get replaced. I'm not looking to mark anything up here. Literally only measuring this so I get my right squares by 25 foot. Now I have all of the measurements of my roof and I can begin starting to do my elevation inspection. Okay. Now, as far as my elevations, I want to get an overview of my front elevation. And if I could get an overview of my right, I can't because of these trees. But a lot of times I'll stand right in the corner so I can get an overview of front and left elevations. Now I'm going to go find my hail damage on this elevation. I know the storm came from the southwest. So I know that I'm pretty much <laughs> going to have damage on this side of the house. I can see a gutter, I can see a hail hit right here on this gutter. 
And look out here on the front, I hate to forget anything. And that gutter looks good. I'm not gonna include that. Okay, so my front elevation is literally, I have an elevation sheet here. So I know that that's six inch fascia. I know that it's wood, and I know that I'm gonna paint it. Um, my siding is wood, and I'm gonna have to paint that. My gutters are aluminum, and they're painted. Now, I can pretty much tell this gutter across the front, for instance, it's gonna be 31 feet because I measured the roof. So I've got 31 feet across plus another foot. So that's 32 feet. And I can stand here because I know that I'm six foot across this way. So that's gonna be, I'm gonna give them 12 foot on that. So 31 and 12, 43 feet of gutters. And that's it, that's my front elevation. So on my little cheat sheet here, I know everything. When I'm actually writing my estimate, I can use my roof measurements to come up with my gutter measurements, my fascia measurements, my siding measurements. I'm gonna measure from the ground here so we can see how that looks. And I'm gonna step back here again and take a picture of my left elevation. You see my fascia is damaged. You can see my stucco has some damage. I'm looking around for other parts and pieces. Oh, I can see where hail hit my AC fins. So we're gonna have to have that combed out. Again, I know how much fascia paint I'm gonna do on this left elevation. Because I know what my rake is for my roof. Wood, paint. My siding's wood, and I'm gonna paint it. So, come back out here for a second. So now I'm gonna figure out what the square footage of this left elevation is, okay? So I know from the roof that that top, the highest ridge up there is 43 feet long. And if the overhangs are two feet, front and back, that means that this elevation here is 39 feet long. So I know that my measurement's gonna be 39 feet times, I'm gonna measure the height of it. That's going to be right at 15 feet. Now, I'm not going to be painting this section here, so I'm just going to get a 10 feet by 6 feet. So I can tell if this is what this elevation is, this left elevation. I'm going to figure 39 feet times 15 feet for painting. And then I'm going to take 60 square feet off of that. And I'm going to be really close on what this left elevation is. So, if you could step back here and look at this whole elevation. This gets to what I was talking about. Being able to take all of this here and making it two-dimensional. So if you take this section and push it all the way back to that wall of the main house, that's how I'm getting the square footage of this. Now we'll do the rear elevation. Get my overview shot of the rear. And now my damage shots of the rear. So I'm gonna show you a photo. This is a real hail hit on the gutter right here. 
you can see there's a little dimple right up on top here. That's what, that's what you're going to be looking for, a hail hit on the top. These will pop out if hail hits on the inside of the gutters. You'll see extruding dents on the gutters. My screens look okay. Another gutter, gutter. Okay, so I can pretty much tell I'm gonna replace all this gutter. I have a dent here, I have a dent in the center, I have a dent there. Again, I can figure that measurement from what my roof measurement is. So, so I got aluminum gutters, I'm gonna paint them. 31, that was 26, so add five, 36. So now I know what my gutters are. This back looks pretty good. I don't see any damage. Oh, I see. Let me get that one up there. So I had 46, and now that measurement was 29 feet. So I literally, my gutters are 46 plus 29. You can see hail damage on this fence here. A picture of that. And then take a quick picture of my right elevation. What I was talking about on the other side of making it two-dimensional, if you look at this, if you've made that two-dimensional, it would literally be exactly what this elevation is here as it comes in. So because the storm came from the other side, from that direction, the chances of me finding any damage, maybe on the gutters, but the chances of me finding damage on this elevation are going to be really slim because hail's directional. It's going to come this direction from the southwest. So I can imagine the front, the right, and the rear would have damage, but not so much on this side. Maybe, but not so much. My right is no damage. And I need to measure my fence. You can see the runt, how long this measuring tape is out. If you look underneath, my finger is holding this tape to that. If I didn't have my finger on there, it would fall off there. I'm keeping tension on that run so I can keep it on this line here. And 33 feet, so 35, 33 is 68 feet. 68 foot of fence. And all I'm really gonna do with this fence is I'm gonna power wash it and restain it. Great, let's go talk to the insured and tell her what we found. Hi, Hi Miss Sin, I'm all done with the exterior. Um, you wanna show me the damage you were talking about? Yes, yes. In, in the inside, great. So where was the damage on the inside? Up in the upstairs bathroom. Oh. Oh yeah, I can see where that came in. First thing I'm going to do is take an overview of the room. For this bathroom. Usually if I have a lot of interior damage, I'll bring my laser measurer. This is five foot. This is five foot by eight foot. Eight foot. Now I can tell from the missing shingles that we saw up on the roof but that is probably right above where the stain is. So my assumption is that the water came through from the missing shingles, storm created opening, causing damage to the interior. So above here I have insulation, I have a drywall minimum repair basically, and then painting this room. So, and that's really it for this room. It's a very simple, process it'll go into exactimate really simply it'll be a quick estimation okay cut yeah, this room is five foot by eight foot yeah. a painting minimum I mean I even if I if I subtract all that and put paint on the in the exactimate mm -hmm. it would be another 20 bucks who's gonna come out here for 20 mm -hmm. bucks so I'll put a paint minimum in here which is a hundred bucks so the fix on this room might be three hundred and fifty dollars you can find a guy to come out here and fix that little stain for $350. Okay, Mrs. Sin, let me go over what I found with you. 
Okay. Basically, up here in the, the stain that you see in your bathroom, when I was on your roof, I could see where the wind had blown some shingles off. Uh -huh. So it makes sense that with the big rain and the hailstorm and everything else, that that would have come right, in. Right, right. Um, basically, the way that your company determines whether or not we're going to replace or not replace your roof uh -huh. is by how many hail hits I find in a 10 foot by 10 foot square on each slope. And your insurance company requires eight hail hits in 100 square feet. I found plenty on front, back, left, right, so plus I'm wind damage. Roof. I, what I'm going to do is I write my estimate. I send my estimate to the company. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing with you right now is just letting you know the damages I found. You, when you filed your claim, did you get a call from the company and talk to somebody? Just when I first put the claim in and I answered okay. some questions. So here, here's how the process goes. I write my estimate. I take all my photographs. I'm basically the eyes and the ears and measuring stick. Okay. I send that up to the company. And then there's an inside adjuster who will be calling you and going over coverages oh, and going okay. over payments and going over all the rest of okay. those things. So again, I'm just telling you what the guidelines are and I'm telling you what I found up there. So you understand, I don't know what your husband found, right. but if he thought there was hail damage up there, I just want to confirm that there was hail and wind damage up okay. there. Okay, and here's the list. Do you want this list? No, you keep that list. Let me tell you, let me tell you what I found. Oh, so okay. on the front of your house, mm -hmm. um, I found your fascia had some hail damage. Your gutters along here had hail damage. So here's how the process works. You're gonna get two checks from the insurance company. That first check is the total amount of the damage minus your deductible, which I think is $1,000, uh -huh. minus recoverable depreciation, which I'll explain here in a second. Okay. So these are not your numbers. This has nothing to do with your estimate. This is simple math, okay? Uh -huh. Call the number that you called to file your claim. Okay. Give them, you have your claim number, is that correct? Yes. Okay, give them your claim number and they will direct you to that inside adjuster. Okay. Does that work? Yes, thank you. Perfect. You have yourself a great day. Thanks.